Gotta get up. We gotta make more videos. Ugh. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for subscribing and hanging out as always. I've got some coffee here made and I'm trying to decide what drone I'm gonna review today. You've already seen the title of the video so you know what drone we're gonna do. We're gonna do the Phantom 4. Um, we're gonna do that. That's what we're gonna do. But first, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. Okay, so before we go out and fly, the first thing I wanna do is charge up my battery. From the factory, they come about 50% charged. And you're gonna go ahead, plug in your, your power supply to your AC uh, wall unit, plug that in, and go ahead and plug in the battery to the bottom of your charger. And you'll see it start to flash here on the LEDs. And that means that we're charging. When it stops, you should have a full battery and you're ready to fly. We can go out and fly for the first time. Okay, so we can see that the battery has stopped flashing and looks like we have a full charge. So now we can go out and choose our location for flying. I get a lot of questions all the time from guys asking what device should I use, which one should I go out and buy. If you already have an iPad, an Air 1 or 2, it should work. If you don't, uh, don't go out and buy something right away. Check on DJI.com to make sure your device is compatible. Now I'm going to tell you which one I prefer. That's the iPad Air 2, mainly because it has a larger screen and I don't have to worry about phone calls coming in during my flight. Very, very nice and very convenient and it works flawless. It has a fast enough processor in it that I don't get a lot of lag. So we'll talk more on that later. Let's go out and fly. Okay guys, I'm Justin Davis. Welcome to the Zero to Airborne for the Phantom 4. Now, rule number one about flying your Phantom 4, if it's your first day, it's all about location. Rule number one is location, location, location. We're gonna go find a spot out on the no-fly zone and a safe spot where we're not gonna fly over top of people's heads, dogs, cattle, horses, sheep, whatever. Um, government property. If you don't know the rules, check out knowbeforeyoufly.org. You'll find all the rules about current safety as far as federal regulations and check with your local and state regulations as well for drone flying. So now I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go find a nice spot to do our first flight and I'm going to walk you through yours coming up next. Now of course I had to make a quick pit stop first you guys know me well enough by now to know that I can't fly without having something to fuel my flying. What do you think about drones? I think they're more complicated than I can operate. <laughs> there it is guys, there's the Phantom 4. Let's go ahead and open up the box and get started. So go ahead and take a moment to take off the gimbal guard. Very important before you fly, remove this thing and toss it in your box. Now before I put the props on, I'm going to make sure that I have my compass calibrated. You don't want to calibrate the compass with the props on, just, just another safety precaution. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the battery and put that in. And you want to hear that snap into place. Very important so that it doesn't back out while you're in mid-flight and cause a crash. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the transmitter. Press once and then hold two secs. And it should start right up. And the LEDs are good. So we'll go ahead and now we'll do this copter. Press once, hold two secs. And you should hear the copter start. There we go, the copter started up. And now I can go ahead on the iPad, I can open up the DJI GO app. Not going to be able to see that too well right now, so I'll show that on a separate screen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to compass calibration. So uh, once the GPS loads, I like to let the GPS load first, um, get a connection, and then, uh, oh fucking hell. Now, I gotta tell you, one thing that I really don't like about the Phantom series is that you have to have your cable with you when you go to fly. The other thing is that you have to have your device, which really kind of sucks in a way because 
eh, you're always strapped to your device. It would be nice if it was an integrated screen into the controller, but I walked all the way back to the car just to get my cable because I started filming and I forgot my cable. Okay, so I went back and I grabbed my computer cable and now we can plug in the device to the transmitter. The very back, you can see it right here. Plugs in, and then on the side of the device as well. So now when you turn on your transmitter and your drone, the program will actually see that it's connected to your camera. So next up we're going to turn on the transmitter, push once, hold down two seconds, and it'll start up. Now turn on the drone, push once, hold down two seconds. You'll hear a beep. And once it's armed, you can go ahead, wait for the app to respond. Now I've already done the setup procedure at home and I've logged into DJI.com through the app and activated mine. So you wanna make sure you watch the video on how to do that first uh, before you go outside your first day and calibrate your compass before you fly. So right now we're gonna calibrate the compass before we fly. Now next, I'm gonna show you on screen where you go in your app to calibrate the compass. You're going to click on Safe to Fly GPS, and that's going to take you to the next screen, which is where your compass calibration is. You can click right on where it says Calibrate, and it'll say Calibrate Compass, and you'll click OK to begin the calibration process. Okay, now go ahead and pick up your drone. Now, this is going to be on the horizontal axis, so you can hold it just like this. You're going to go all the way around in a circle. You can see underneath there, the light is orange. It's going to turn to green when you reach a full 360. Now face it down towards the ground. You can see that it's still green there. Go ahead and rotate another 360 until you stop and you'll see it start to flash. When you see it start to flash, go ahead and come back to level and come down and your compass calibration is complete. So now we had a successful compass calibration. We're gonna go ahead and take the plastic off the center hub of the prop and we're gonna put the props on the right motor. Um, so we got eight props total. I've got four props ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and show you now how to put those on the motors. It's pretty easy to tell which prop goes on which motor. If you look on the top of the motor, you'll see on the top of these columns that there's black dots here. So look on the top of the prop, you'll see a black ring around there, and that's the prop that matches that motor. Same over here on the silver top. It's not silver on the top of here, but the silver prop will go on that particular motor. Now you can go ahead and securely fasten your prop. You're gonna put it on and you're gonna twist and it'll lock into place, push down and it'll pop up and you can twist it back and forth to see if it's locked in place. The only way you'll be able to let it go is to push down and twist to the left again. Push down, twist to the right and you can feel that it's securely locked in place. There is a note here on the side that gives you a little warning on how to do that. Make sure that it matches up with the black dots on this motor and silver with the other motors. Okay guys, now we're at the field and we're gonna do our first circuits. Very important that you do some circuits first. I'm gonna walk you through that, how to do a square circuit and we're gonna do a circular circuit and we're also gonna do GPS column. The GPS column is essentially flying a straight vertical ascension and then coming down in a descent so we're going to work on those. They're going to, those are going to help you on your aerial uh, maneuvers later on when you start doing aerial photography with your Phantom 4. So first and most foremost, we're going to turn on everything. First thing we're going to do is turn on the transmitter, push once, hold it down two seconds, and your transmitter lights should be blinking after you do that. Next thing you're going to do is walk over and turn on the drone itself by pushing once, pressing hold two seconds. Open up your DJI GO app and wait for your camera to connect. Now, if this is the first day with your Phantom 4, it's really important that you learn how to fly at line of sight. That means not relying on your FPV screen. You want to fly it right in front of you the first time. Fly these circuits and this will help you out a ton when you start to fly because if you lose video signal, if you're way out there, you want to have it close enough so that if you need to bring it back manually and fly it back manually for any reason at all, 
you understand the basic orientations of how to fly your Phantom 4 is very, very important. So that's what this video is all about today with your first day with your Phantom 4. So we'll go into the more complex stuff later and we'll show you some FPV tricks and techniques on tap fly and follow assist and all that good stuff. But for today, for your first day, we're gonna keep it very simple so that you go home with your Phantom 4 intact. Now I'll go ahead next and we'll fly our first circuit. We'll do our first takeoff and I'm gonna show you how to do a manual takeoff as well as the tap to fly takeoff on here as well. So we'll show you that next. Okay, so no one is around. I've checked my environment, looked left and right and backwards and forwards just to make sure that no one's close to me when I go to take off. There's two ways you can take off. You can take off by bringing the sticks down into the outside or down in center and that'll arm the blades and bring you up to an idle speed. But before we do that, the first thing we're gonna show you is an auto takeoff. Up on the top left hand side of your screen, you're gonna notice what looks like a little cat litter box with an arrow coming up out of it. Go ahead and tap that once and it'll ask you if you wanna do a takeoff. Just go ahead and slide that over and you should be ready to go. Now one thing that I need to mention is that when you first turn on your Phantom 4, you want to make sure that you let it sit there and load up the GPS before you take off. Don't just set it down, turn it on, and then take off. Very important that you let it sit. Get up to 10 to 15 satellites on your, your, your DJI GO app before you do your tap to take off. Very important. I've seen guys just take off without a whim and start flying and not load the GPS. This is important because you want to make sure that it records the home point in case you have it come back and need to land. Right now it's flying in position mode, it's in GPS mode, and it's holding its stability for us and waiting for us to react with the sticks. So coming up next, we're going to do our first square circuit. We're going to do it only using the right stick. For a manual takeoff, you want to bring the sticks out to the outside and touch the bottom corners and that'll put you in a low idle. It's not going to take off, but it's going to sit there on the ground and wait for you to push the left hand stick up to make your ascent and make your first takeoff manually. So this is a manual takeoff right here. I'll show you real quickly. Push the left stick up nice and gently. Now once it's off the ground, you're going to want to let it sit there, hover for a second, and then you can go into doing your first circuits. Okay guys, there's two ways to land. One is to tap on that same, looks like a cat box with that arrow pointing up, and it'll ask you if you want to land the aircraft. You can push that to the side, to the right, and it'll automatically land for you. So I press that button, and now it's going to automatically descend and land. It's going to turn the motors off also, but now I'm going to show you how to do that manually. I'm going to arm it. I'm going to take off real quick. Bring it up into a hover. Now that it's at a hover, I can bring it down and land it manually. The way you do this is the left stick, bring it down nice and slow. Make sure you're on a level surface. Maybe a couple inches at a time. Once it hits the grass, hold down the left stick all the way for a second or two, and it's going to disarm the motors. So now you performed a manual landing. Okay, so we're in a hover and we're ready to do our first circuit. So this is going to be right stick only. Take your right stick and we're going to move to the right about 10 feet. And stop. Now you're going to go forward about 10 or 15 feet and stop. Now you're going to fly to the left 10 or 15 feet and stop. Now you're going to fly back towards yourself and stop at the edge of your square. Now you're going to fly over to the right again and that's going to complete your first square circuit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do that circuit but we're going to do it in an opposite fashion. Using the right stick only we're going to go to the left. Come over to the edge of your square a little faster this time and stop. Now I'm going to fly forward, and I'm going to stop, fly over to the right, and stop, 
If you notice that it gets closer to the ground, go ahead and bump it up a little bit with the left stick. You're a little higher off the ground. Okay, we're gonna bring it back to its original position and we're gonna let go of the stick and it's gonna stop itself. So we're in GPS lock. We have a nice solid lock and it stopped waiting for our next command. So coming up next, we're gonna do the first organic circle using the right stick only. Nice thing about GPS flying is we can be totally lazy and we can sit there and have a sandwich and, and let this thing just hover and do its own thing. It's pretty cool. As long as there's not a whole lot of wind, a safe amount of wind is usually 10 to 15 miles an hour. If you fly in anything over that, you're kind of taking a risk. So a lot of people ask us that question. So keep it under 15 miles an hour and you're usually good to go. So let's go ahead and fly that first circle circuit. Now we're going to use the right stick again. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher this time. And I'm going to start my circle. Bring it nice and tight and keep it in a nice tight circle. So I'll go out to the right first. And just like a joystick, like an 80s video game, bring it back around. And now I've done my first circle. Push it a little further away. And what we're teaching you here is we're teaching you the basic orientation of control. One more circle and we're going to go the opposite fashion. Going to do a nice tight circle around, coming back around to the left using the right stick only and stop in position. Okay guys, now we're going to show you what I call a GPS column. That's a straight up boost and ascent and then down descending in the same column. This is pretty cool for aerial shots and your photography. This is one of the most basic moves you can do is the GPS column. And it's going to hold its position as it goes up in that column. So the way you perform that, the introduction to the throttle stick. You're going to go ahead and left stick only, push it straight forward, and the copter is going to ascend and go straight up. Okay, now we're going to push down and have it come back down to the position we were. So left stick only, straight down. Now you've flown your first GPS column. Very simple. Okay, so now that we're playing with that left stick, let's go ahead and do some nose in flying. Left stick again. We're going to use the yaw axis. So you're going to push your left stick left or right, which will rotate the Phantom 4. You're going to go left first. Slowly rotating around so I can take that cool selfie. Once I get all the way around in, I'm nose in flying toward myself. Now I can push on the right and it'll rotate back away from me. And next up, we'll do our first forward flying. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now. We're going to take off and we're going to do our first forward flying. And we're going to do some general flying around the field. So after you've done all these other orientations, you're ready to fly around line of sight for the first time. Try not to look at your screen to see where you're going. Try to keep your eyes on the drone and focus on orientation with your sticks. Because I'm telling you guys, if you learn how to fly manually first, it's going to benefit you huge later. Very, very nice for when you're trying to line up shots if you're just close in or trying to just see where your drone is in general. That way you have an idea of where your fingers are in relation to the orientation of your drone uh, with your sticks. One thing I did want to mention, very important, is that when your drone is facing in line of sight, when you push left, it's going to go to the right if it's, if it's facing it. So if you're taking a selfie and you push the right stick right, the drone is actually going to go left the opposite way. So be prepared for that. If you're somewhere where you're flying close in, there's trees or whatever, we've had people crash their drone before because they, they didn't realize they thought it you know, was, was malfunctioning, but it was actually them pressing the stick the wrong direction when it was facing them. So keep that in mind, kind of like an RC car. So let's go ahead and fly our first free flying around the field, our forward flying. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do that auto takeoff. So go ahead and press your cat litter box on the top left of the screen there and slide it over to the right and you'll do an auto takeoff. Remember, you want to wait for your GPS to load up. You want to make sure you have enough satellites on your DJI GO app before you take off. 16 or more is always great. So let's go ahead and do some forward flying now and learn my orientations. So like I said before, you want to keep an awareness of other people around. 
Make sure that there's no dogs or anything coming near your copter. If dogs do come out while you're flying, make sure that you keep it up and away from them while they're under your copter, if they are indeed under your copter. Keep it up, don't try to land, because the props could actually hurt an animal or somebody. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice my orientation. Fly forward. I'm gonna incorporate the left stick now and put some yaw into it as I'm flying around. And I'm gonna play around with the yaw. This is the left stick, which lets me spin around very easily. Now I'm going to demonstrate what I told you about before, about nose in flying. If I press the stick, the right stick, if I move it to the right, the copter is going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to show you that now. So see that? I press right and it went left on me. Press left and it went right on me. So keep that in mind, very important when you're flying nose in and you're learning line of sight flying. I'm going to spin it around. When it's away from us, the orientation is correct. If I press right, it's going to go right. If I press left, it's going to go left. If I pull back, it's going to go back. If I push forward, it's going to go forward. So pretty cool, easy to understand. Now here's a pro tip for you guys that are just getting started. Keep it in close. Please keep it in close the first day. Don't try to go flying like a half mile away and then, you know, a, a mile away and then complain that you lost signal. Keep it in close the first day and you'll keep your copter and bring it home with you. Okay guys, that was a successful first flight and our first day out flying in the field with our first battery on our Phantom 4. So you'll notice on the bottom of this that the red lights are blinking. Why are they blinking? Because the battery is done. Whenever your flat red lights start blinking, bring it down and land it. You wanna bring it back immediately. If it gets under 30% mark on your battery, you can tell in your DJI Go app that your battery is going dead. So I always say to bring it back when there's, I mean, if you have 30% left, go ahead and bring it back and land it. Have it on the ground by 30% and you're gonna have a safe, safe flight. If you run it down to 15% and below 20%, you're really risking your Phantom 4. If you're way out there half mile out and you got 15%, forget getting back. It's gonna be very difficult. So that will cause it to drop out of the air if it runs out of juice. So, I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Thanks for hanging out again today. Please click subscribe. See you on the next one. I was late coming back to my car. I didn't get a ticket. That's awesome. Thank you, Portland.